Sir, do you believe that there is urgent need for a better understanding or a better uh, set of judicial infrastructure to deal with the kind of cases we've talked about, corporate cases? There has been one school of thought which said, let's create specialized tribunals. There has been another school of thought which has said, let's encourage more arbitration so that matters can be settled quickly, so that judicial delays do not affect commercial cases where, as you would agree, that once it is delayed, it is certainly denied. How do you see that evolving? See, it's a, it's a multi-pronged uh, disease and a multi-pronged approach is required. Firstly, I would call it tribunalization. So many tribunals have been created in the last 10-15 years. From Green Tribunal to Securities Tribunal to Competition Tribunal to River Water Tribunal, all kinds of tribunals. The idea was good that it will, you know, not get clogged in courts because courts are already clogged. So let's create a new tribunal. Unfortunately, the idea may be lofty, but what has in fact happened is that you have manned it with personnel who are either retired bureaucrats or retired judges. Neither of them have the expertise to deal with these special laws, whether competition or green or whatever. And the parliament created these tribunals with a view that, uh, as you said, that you will have swift justice, experts sitting there, not necessarily bureaucrats. You can have an expert, you can have a scientist. But the pattern of tribunals the last 50 years has always been retired bureaucrats and retired judges, generally. By and large, none of them are specialized. And the basic job, and there is a fight between ministries, there are inter-ministry fights between finance ministry and environment ministry or the coal ministry or some other ministry. And As to who should ban, them. who mm. should staff them. These are not, these are not so-called post-retirement jobs. Post-retirement uh, plum posting so that you can get a job, get all your benefits, including car and a house and your allowances, and you chill for another five years. That was not the idea. But that is how it is being implemented. Parliament never intended that. The implementing body is the government. And the government is not realizing that the government itself is suffering because the ultimate object of declogging the courts hasn't functioned. So you, you put these people, they don't know what the law is. So what's the solution according to you? One solution is that either you don't man them with these retired personnel. You should have a select body to appoint them as we are thinking of the Judicial Commission. Have a select body which consists of experts and one or two important politicians or whatever, leader of opposition. And appoint people who are experts in the line, who have a track record, rather than merely bureaucrats or retired judges. Either that should happen, and if that can't happen, then abolish these tribunals, because they have taken away the jurisdiction of the High Court. A high court judge is not a servant of the appointer. He's not a servant of the, the government. And a large number of judges are appointed from lawyers. They have not served any master. So there is still independence that you will, the, the judge will decide. And if he is a trained judge, he can learn some of these laws which were not there. Either have that and create divisions in the high court. So you appoint some judges who are experts, as you said, in commercial or corporate fields. In one infrastructure, in one building of the High Court, take the Delhi High Court for example, it can seat 50 judges. If you could create one more floor, it could seat 15 more. And if it seats 15 more, it takes away five different tribunals. So the infrastructure for creating five tribunals, five buildings, 50 employees, 50 stenos, 50 drivers, 50 cars. All that is taken care of. It is housed in one area and you will have a more independent uh, uh, look. These tribunals, 
I mean, I wouldn't, wouldn't call them independent if you're consider, considering, uh, consisting of retired bureaucrats. And I have seen in these tribunals, a lot of the bureaucrats are wearing court clothes. I mean, a jacket and a gown and, you know, as if you've been a judge. I mean, God knows whether the man has a law degree or not. So you, you are creating a facade as if you are equivalent to the High Court. You chip away at the jurisdiction of the High Court, make a tribunal. The tribunal doesn't really render justice because they have been serving the master for the last 40 years. And the master is always on one side of a dispute. The government is the biggest litigator in this country in some form or the other, whether it's a bank or whether it's a PSU, whether it's a corporation or a state government or the central government. So what you're going to get is again going to be challenged. Every order of the tribunal is challenged. And you, you, to shut out the High Court, you created an appeal straight to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court becomes the first appeal. Supreme Court was meant to be the last, not the first. Let me ask you a final question in a more lighter way. And does your diary indicate that litigation over the next 6 months to 12 months is only going to increase? Undoubtedly. Undoubtedly. I have no doubt. Not that I want to do more litigation. I am sick of it. But <laughs> one gets caught. In litigation, every sector is in litigation. People are unhappy. And you know, it's a, it's a very sad reflection on, uh, on the judiciary. And people blame the judiciary because it takes years and years and years. But what is the solution? Tribunals are certainly not the solution. You've been extremely honest as always, Mr. No. Rahadgi. Thank you very much for joining us here on the board.